Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Um, essentially, we have some closet doors that we want to trim out with base just so they become sort of invisible. It's for a, it's for a, a luxury uh, showroom. And essentially, this is back of house storage that's actually client facing, but we don't want it to read as so screamingly as, as closet. So we do want to put trim on the base. And I'm wondering if I need or if I can uh, use the Ricks and Pivot hinges and if I need to use a certain offset. I saw they make a three quarter offset and a one and a half offset. Um, would either of those be the right application for this? So 370s are not made in three quarter or inch and a half offset. It's like okay. saying I need a square round object. Um, just the two don't belong together. 370s are center hung. Other pivots are offsets, and it's the offset that are three quarter or inch and a half. What's going to be the degree of uh, what's going to be the degree of opening? Uh, maximum. I mean, if we could do 110, that'd be great. If we can only do 90, that would be fine too. Well, if you're just going to keep it to 90, then the 370, the standard 370, is going to work. You know, you're not going to need okay. to. Uh, to do anything special about that. If you got to get past 90, that's when you got to really start thinking about where that vertical axis of pivoting is. Well, I mean, they would, if it's going to add complication, uh, we could just have it be 90, but obviously the, the end user is going to want it to open as far as possible. Um, but that well, said, um, the, the doors are inch and three quarter. Uh, the base is only half inch, so is there a calculation I could do, or is there like a formula, something to figure out which offset I need, or is there like a standard like table of numbers that you can just refer to? There's not. I've often thought about creating one, actually, but the way that I do it is I pop it all into AutoCAD, and then I know exactly what I have to do. Um, so the first thing you've got to do is absolutely determine what the degree of opening is going to be. And once you know okay. what that's going to be, you can then work around that. Okay. Um, is there is the three-quarter versus inch and a half, they're, they're both invisible, right? Like you don't see a knuckle on one of them, or do you see a knuckle on one, you know, yeah. or is it all concealed within the... All offset pivots uh, would feature uh, a prominent aspect about it that you're going to see when the door is closed. So if you want something to be thoroughly concealed, you need to abandon the idea of offset pivot. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> in in that case, if we just do the three with the 370, we'll get 90, and then what? If the base will start binding on the other base is that the idea well the face of the door is going to hit it's going to hit the jam it's going to hit you know whatever is there i mean you'll get more than 90 but not much okay okay um i mean definitely them being completely concealed is the ideal option we're, we're going jamless as well so i also you know, the other option would be to use like a sausage or something, but then we have to start doing things, more interesting things with blocking in the jams and then how to treat that and not have cracking and stuff. So I prefer to use the the, the Rixton just because that way we can just have drywall openings and then we're just having to mortise into the header and the floor. Yeah, what's, um, the, what's the header going to be made out of? Uh, it'll be framed, but we can have... The, you know, the sheetrock will come over that framing, whereas with the vertical jam, we'd have to treat it, uh, I feel like we'd have to treat that differently, but maybe not. I don't know. You, you're going to have the same problem with a 370 if you've got drywall. Uh, you, you've got to have lumber to, to mortise your top pivot to. So while you won't have that problem with a 370 in multiple locations like you would with sauce, 
you're going to have that problem in one location for sure. Um, but it, so if the door face is cold planar with the sheetrock, would I not be able to have a you know solid blocking behind the sheetrock? You know, three eight three quarters behind the sheetrock, or would that not align? Like, am I going to run into an issue? Like, I'll need trim because the the pivot is or the mortars for the pivot is going to be too close, like past the face of the rock, essentially. No, no, not that. Or, so just the underside of the header. You know, if you're going to have half inch or five eighth rock. You know, how are you going to mortise to that? Because the entire concept of the pivot is uh, something that needs to be mortised into a solid base material. And when you're eliminating half or five-eighths of the depth in terms of having nothing to attach to, I don't see how that pivot's going to stay very uh, well in place. It's a, well, no, it's a, there, would be, there would be a solid piece of wood behind the sheet, you know, in section behind the piece of sheetrock that that's the, it's, you know, the, the center, you know, the, the 370 would be mortised into. It's on that front face, uh, you know, the, the sheetrock would only be, would just capture that front edge. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is that the door thickness and the width of this, if we're not, if that can't actually exist behind that face of the face of the wall, essentially. Nothing will be attached to the face of the wall at all with the 370. It will go the underside of it. Right, right, right. But I'm, what I'm saying is the, the projection from... So if the, the face of the door is coplanar with the wall, right? It's That's all one plane. So you, when you say coplanar, you, you, you're, you're, you're saying flush. Okay, that's easy. Of course it is, because you, you want to make these closet doors disappear. Right. So I guess what what my question is is the basically the depth, which would obviously is perpendicular to that face. It, are we going to run into a problem where that mortise is going to exist closer than five eighths from the finished wall? You Got nothing I mean? to do with the dimension from the face of the wall because you're gonna you are going to mortise that into the center of the thickness of the door. And the door is going to be flush, and you're going to have five eighths of rock on the on the elevation of the wall. Well, where you're going to mortise the top pivot will be behind that five eighths. But the but what I'm referring to is the underside of the header. What you would look, what you would see if you stood in the opening and then looked straight up at the sky, the underside of yes. the header. If you have five eighths of rock, hold on. If you have five eighths of rock there. You're not going to have anything solid to mortise the top pivot to, even if you've got solid lumber behind. No, no, that's that that would be a poplar. That's that would be a piece of wood. That's oh, that you're would, so, you're good. Oh, you're absolutely yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, my my question was more: if, Do I have room behind that face that I can mortise into and not have to see the leading edge of the wood? Again, we want to make it. It it's all trimless, but I don't want to get into sourcing weird extrusions to tape in and all this other stuff, you know, like just want to put a J bead on that, the top of the opening essentially. And then the rest of it left and right is just a drywall opening with corner beads. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So how thick are the doors? One and three quarter. Okay. So you're going to install that plug. So it then becomes what is the width of the prep of the top pivot for the 370. And yeah. I think that's a 340 that goes with that. Let me look. 370. Template. The width of the top, the width of the pivot at the top is 1 in 5, uh, 1 in 5 16. Um, so half of that is going to be basically 11 32nd. Uh, no, it's going to be. Uh, tw I think 22, 22, 30, 22, 30 seconds. So you're going to be, you, you'll encroach into the space slightly of the, of the five eighths drywall on the face of the wall, but that's, you're not trying, you're not going to be sinking a screw into it. Because you're, you're, are you going to run the drywall down long and have the lumber sit inside of that? Or will the drywall from the, face of the wall stop on top of the lumber. Let's say your wall is four and seven eighths. What is your header going to, your piece of wood at the header? Is it going to be four and seven eighths? Or is it going to be? No, it, 
three and four and eight or three, you know, just under. I, I would want it to sit behind so we end up yeah, with yeah, just yeah. a painted opening. I, I don't want to see the that leading edge, that you know, three quarter of the poplar at the top. It's again, it's it, it's just it's the the visual of it. So I'm trying to figure out how to make the visual yeah. align with the the technical. Yeah, you're going to nibble into that drywall face a little bit for the hardware, but it's your screw's not going to go through there. So, gotcha. So, but then you end up with sort of a weird condition when the door is open. You would see. Oh yeah, yeah, you're going to see that. Yeah. And because ideally, I would put a J bead or something on that edge so I can paint it and have a nice clean edge where it meets the the wood. So in that case, what I need to use thinner sheetrock above the doors. If I used half inch rock, would I be okay? No, you're still going to have that problem. Okay. You'll need the JB, but you could probably do a situation where you bias the pivot towards the push side as much as possible, which will give you an odd, you know, position of the vertical axis of pivoting. Um, but a combination of that and half inch drywall could could put you there. The only way to know for sure is to toss it into AutoCAD. Or at least that's gotcha. the only way for me to know for sure. You know, where that would yeah, be I can, in place. Is there a place I can download uh the templates for the three seventy and the three forty or whatever else you were looking at yeah, there? Yes, it's on my site. You have them on your site? Uh, awesome. Give me one second. Uh Templates. Okay. Um, so what you would do is you would search Rickson three seventy. Well, I'm 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 on it. I'm looking at it. Um, oh, okay. There's a three. Three three forty top view. Three seventy bottom pivot set. Three seventy center pivot. Uh, PS three zero six zero zero. Um is there a DXF file? A what file? DWG or DXF or something that's no, already the, you'd have to contact Rickson for an AutoCAD type file. I don't have it. Okay. But that you know, I don't see that really being anything that you could use to help. You're just gonna draw a couple of you know, rectangular objects and then rotate around a, a point. Um, right, you know, right. No big whoop. And the, and the advantage of doing that, it will also tell you what margin you need between the the pivot style of the door and the jam, or what minimum radius you'll get by. You'll have to get by with. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. And do you have these in stock by any chance? Oh yeah. 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 And plus. Yeah, you don't want the Rickson 370. You want the ADH 0370. 8080370. You want the ABH as an Alpha Bravo Hotel 0370. Gotcha. And what's different about that, or what is that one? The cost. Identical hardware, the cost is what's noticeably different about it. Okay. Does it come in brass finish? You can you can definitely order it in satin or polished brass in terms of a brass based material. You can order it in sprayed brass finishes, a sprayed brass as well. Okay. Yeah, we'd want to do polished brass. Um, is there is there a lead time on the brass stuff, or is it stocked somewhere? There would be a lead time. Um, I stock typically black and stain black, and then stainless steel. So if it's something that needed to ship really fast, you'd stick with the Rickson 370 because we do keep that one in stock in polished brass. Okay. And what's the price difference between the two? Uh, I need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need seven pair, seven sets. Yeah, it, it would be it would be a a um, a noticeable. It, it's a noticeable difference in price. You'd be at least $125 per opening savings to go with ABH, but you're going to have to give them two weeks for polished brass. Two weeks? Okay, that's that's not a that's not a deal breaker. Two weeks is okay. 
then um, if it's like yeah. six or eight, then that's a problem for me. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, the advantage, yeah. So there you go. Uh, and then what happens at that point is, uh, you know, and I've got, I, I do, you know, if you really needed to prototype something quickly, you'd end up buying another piece of hardware. Actually, um, what we might be able to do is sell you one from stock, and I might be able to buy just the balance of the components on the six, on the seventh unit so that you could prototype, and then it would be just a new bottom plate, um, a bottom component with the spindle, and then the finished plate for the uh, top of it. The trim for the top, yeah. Yeah, so you might be able to do that. Okay, and does it uh, these function the same way essentially as the 307? It's got the little screw in the top that that moves the pivot out of the way to get it in place. Is it yeah, the same so type it's, of? It's by no coincidence that the part numbers are basically identical. <laughs> ah, suspicious. <laughs> well, that, no, the 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 one of the engineers for Rickson back in the 80s, um, Hit Sa is his name. Well, he left Rickson and in the very early 90s started ABH, and they've been successfully producing lots of items for those for the last three plus decades. And, you know, he he just went about duplicating a lot of the Rickson line. Okay, that's that's good to know. I didn't, uh, I just came across you guys on a Google search looking for info on having trim on my center pivot door. So uh, I'm glad I found you. Um, is there, you have an email? Could I send you sort of what we're looking at, where we need to ship, and you could maybe give me a pro forma or at least uh, an idea about cost on all this? Absolutely. My email is under contact us in the upper right hand corner of the site. It's just the sale yep. email that's there, and that comes straight to me. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong site. I'm on the other site. Contact us. Sales at absupply.net? Yes, sir. That comes right to me. Okay. All right, cool. I will put together a little email with what sort of hardware we're looking for. There are some other items, too, flush poles and that kind of thing. Do you guys stock uh, other types of door hardware? I assume you do, right? Yeah, we could do everything you need for those doors. Okay, cool. Um so I will. I'll send you a list of what we're looking for. I mean, we'd put, we'd need some alternates on some other stuff. I was getting like eight to twelve week leads on things. I just don't have that much time. So uh, I'll put together a little uh, hardware package and shoot it over to you and see what see what we can do. Yeah, and then the advantage of buying the pivots from us is that I will put it into AutoCAD and send that to you, so you can see what's going on. I mean, if if you know about a DWG file, you you can or you have access to somebody who can do it as well. But it's how I, you know, monetize my knowledge. But it's also how I make it a no-brainer for the guy buying it from me and not, you know, going elsewhere is the bottom line. Oh yeah, I mean, I I fully have access to CAD. I use SketchUp and CAD, and I'm I'm well versed in modeling and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's I totally appreciate that. If you want to do it, at least you've done it before. You know, sort of what to look out for in terms of yeah, yeah. specifying yeah. your radius on the jam side, because that is something we'll have to we'll have to do. I know we need a radius slightly, so that's all, if all that math is something you've done before, it might be less of a learning curve for me to fumble around with it for a half hour or so. Yeah. Um, but I will uh, I will send you an email with what we're looking for, and uh, two weeks is no problem. We're starting demo on Monday, and we need to be open early September, so it's tight, but two weeks is doable. We, we, probably, we won't even have the doors for probably three weeks, so yes, um, we're we're we should be in good shape. Yes, sir. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.